Hey, welcome to Healthy Healing Loss. My name is Dee Dee. Today we're going to talk about the Think Lab stethoscope and we're going to try to connect it directly to a hearing source. So what I mean by that is for the hearing aid, around the hearing aid, without the hearing aid. So there's some options there. So I do want to cover all of those and I'll also cover the features that are in the Things Lab. But let's first go ahead and do an unbox of the Things Lab. Stay tuned. I have is the Think Slab box. Think Labs. I gotta make sure I say that because sometimes I say Think Slab. So excuse me if I do say that. I'm gonna start off with the Think Slab box. There you go. That's what it looks like. It has a little Think Labs on the side. See that a uh, little reflection there, perhaps. I do want to make sure I say that the content of the videos and my opinions are not paid by anybody on the outside. So I bought everything myself. Let's go ahead and open this baby up. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is slide this out. That's just a cover. And then this is the actual box. We're going to go ahead and open it up. It has the, of course, booklet that tells you every little detail about it. All right, so let's go ahead and take this out. Wow, this is pretty nice. It comes in a nice little blue case here and it has the logo right on the outside for Think Lab stethoscope. And this is the digital stethoscope. And we're gonna open this baby up. And this is pretty, pretty nice. Look at this. Wow, it looks pretty sweet. When you open it up, it's in a little case like that. That's what it looks like. That's what it comes with it. All right, so there's a couple of things I want to talk about with this uh, Things Lab stethoscope. I have a couple of items on my table here that I'm going to show you, but I do want to go over some of the highlights uh, or the features of this Things Lab. It is small, very nice looking, shiny, and it fits in the palm of your hand, which is kind of nice. So it's easy to put into my pocket and my regular like jean pocket or scrub pocket whatever I'm wearing or I can put it in my jacket that's the first thing and it is versatile so that means it can connect to a bunch of things so we first have it goes to headphones it can go over your hearing aids or you can use without your hearing aids and put the headphones on not something I would do you can use earbuds and they have some nice earbuds from Thanks Lab. I've also tried them with the Apple Pods. Is that what they're called? Yeah, Apple Pods, AirPods, but you can use them with earbuds. And then you can also use them with a streamer. So those are the, some of the things that we're gonna go over. The other thing is that you can plug it into a speaker a loudspeaker for teaching purposes. So I'm gonna demonstrate that as well. Just because if you have a good idea of the options that you can use with the Things Lab. So on the website, it says that it has a hundred times amplification. It has a rechargeable lithium battery. You have just one face and a diaphragm. So this is the face of the Things Lab and you control the bell and the diaphragm with these little buttons on the side. So on this side, you have the bell and then this side you have a diaphragm. So instead of doing like a regular traditional stethoscope where you just turn it side by side to get to the bell or diaphragm, it's all controlled on one face and it's all digital. There's hertz in here. So there's hertz that filter to change the frequency for specific body sounds that represent the bell and diaphragm. So you'll see once you get it, if you buy it, it has on the very top, it has zero. And on the other side it says, H, Z, which means hertz. So that is your frequency that you'd be using to change from high to low frequencies. And also in the very bottom, it has a zero to 10 is your volume. So that's all the little points that you can do to increase the sound so you can hear sounds better. So the volume up and down on the face. You can have two people listen for teaching purposes with an adapter, which I don't have and I haven't really needed to do that, so. If you want to check that out, check out it on the website. It turns off automatically after two minutes as a default setting. And you can change this automatic shut off feature from one to 10 minutes. So you have the option to do that. I keep it at two minutes at the default. You can clean this Think Lab with 
alcohol, okay? So if I wanted to open this baby up, I have my alcohol swab here and I can go ahead and clean the face, clean around the edges, and then also clean the diaphragm itself. That's the part that actually touch your patient, so that's the one I would focus on. But you can use alcohol, but you cannot use like soap and water. It is not water resistant or proof. And they also have some adapters for telemedicine and that's something I'm not using it for. So again, if you want to look on the website and check it out, go for it. But I'm only going to be talking about how to connect the things lab to various ways so that you as a medical professional can hear your patient's heart sounds, lung sounds, bowel sounds, pretty good. A hundred times amplification. The final thing I have here, which I actually put on there was it has superb, superb customer service. I've had this thing turn off on me where I couldn't turn it back on. So they basically told me through email, go ahead and send it on back to Colorado. And then they sent it back pretty quickly with a new battery fixed up, ready to go, no charge. That's pretty good so customer service if you ask me. So we are on the website here. We're going to click on it. And on the front page here, you will see a nice picture of this thing slabs. And it says it's the smallest, most powerful stethoscope in the world. Fits in the palm of your hand, as I mentioned, amplifies over a hundred times, uses audio headphones. Those are the things that says right on the front of the website. Safe distance auscultation, so it protects you, especially during the COVID. PPE auscultation, there are ways, there's a video on there that shows you how to don and doff PPE and still use your Things Lab stethoscope, which is pretty awesome. And then of course it goes down to the earbuds and then it goes to the um, headphones itself. And then it has here introducing Think Link. Now, I don't know about that. Record and share sounds like never before using your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Mac and PC. Okay open up a world of possibilities for telemedicine, education, research, and electronic medical records. All right, we'll have a look in that afterwards. Using with mobile app. All right, so that's not something, and there's all those pictures of people using the Things Lab in a little cartoon drawing here. Okay, and then we're gonna scroll back up at the top, and I wanted to point this out so that you can know all the details depending on how you wear your hearing aids, whether you have an inner ear, you know, whether you have a, a behind the ear, that type of thing. We're going to go ahead to clinical applications here. When you click on that, it gives you a drop down, it has a bunch of choices that you can look at, and you can always research yourself. But I'm looking down here where it says hearing impaired. Now, hearing impaired is not a term that we would really use these days. You would do hearing loss, hard of hearing. Hearing impaired makes people feel like they are disabled or something was wrong with them. So. I wouldn't use that. But anyway, when you click on that, it just kind of gives you a little history. But that's not where I want to go. Let's get back up here and look at the hearing aid. And this is going to give you a lot of information that you want to know. This is Things Labs One Electronic Stethoscope addresses the spe specialized need and unique challenges of hearing impaired medical professionals. That's you. First one they have here is no hearing aids, and then that will tell you what you can use, and then they have a close fit CIC, ITC behind the, the ear receiver in the canal, and they have a close fit receiver above the ear. The close fit behind the ear receiver is what I have. So I have the behind the ear, and then I have a hearing aid that goes in the ear itself. So there's open and close fit. So you can explore those. If you have a cochlear imprint as well, you can use these as well. They suggest using over the ear headphones for cochlear implant. And this one is me, close fit BTE hearing aids. And you can see the one that they used on the right here where it says close fit BTE with streamer. That's how I use my, my Thinks Lab stethoscope. But I would, I'm gonna cover the headphones later. And that's about it. And some pictures in the bottom of how it's actually, you can see in a picture here, they have the streaming from Tico right to the streamer directly to the Thinks Lab stethoscope, which is how I use it. Okay, so that's the website. So those are the things that I wanted to cover as far as like what I found for features on the website. And you can learn more on the website on your own. But let's get to the the meat of this video, we want to learn how to hear with this stethoscope. If 
first thing I want to do is my alcohol stuck to it. The first thing I want to cover is earbuds. These are the ones that I actually received from Things Labs. Did I say that right? Yeah, Things Labs. And they're actually made by them. They, they kind of go at an angle, which is kind of nice. And so they fit nice and snug in the ear itself. So you can put these in like regular earbuds. You put them in your ear just like this. It has the right side and the left side. You put them in your ear just like this. I can't because I have my hearing aids in. But if I kept them in my ear somehow, if I could just get them to hang on there, <laughs> then I can plug this into the thing flaps, and there you go. So somebody with hearing, regular hearing, normal hearing, I guess, or somebody with mild hearing loss could use it this way and hear perfectly fine. Now I can hear it when I do this, but it's not enough for me to identify heart murmurs and wheezing, wows, all that kind of stuff. So I don't, I wouldn't use this for myself with my hearing loss. So, but that's just an option for somebody who has hearing or normal hearing or has mild to moderate maybe. You would have to try it. I don't know, but it doesn't work for me because I have moderate to severe hearing loss. So bye-bye. This will go away. All right. So that's the first thing that I wanted to cover. The second thing I wanted to talk about is keeping your hearing aids in. Now my hearing aids do not have Bluetooth in it. Okay. So there, it does have T-coil. So the T-coil is going to help me here. But for right now, I just want you to know I have zero Bluetooth in this hearing aid. So I'm trying to look for ways that I can hear directly from the Think Lab and to write to my ears. First option, and this is what I have. I have a set of headphones. These are the Audio Technica Quiet Point. I bought these a while ago. This is the right side, left side. It's supposed to have noise cancellation button in there. Uh, I guess I'll send a, I'll put a link in the description if you want to check these out. But the first thing I can do is I can go ahead and put these directly over my my ears. The problem I might have is that I, sometimes it can cause feedback because my hearing aids are pretty powerful. And so they may, they may take a couple seconds to kind of adjust them so that they're not whistling. Oops, no. Nope. It doesn't like it. <laughs> All right, let's try that. I, it's not liking it at all. So it would be hard for me to use these without making my ears, my hearing aids whistle. What if I turn them down? Maybe it won't whistle as much. It's really hard for me. So if I don't move, that's still whistling. <laughs> if I get it so it doesn't whistle, it's like hardly, it's really impossible. But I do want to, I do want to mention that this does work. Can you hear that? It's whistling. Oh my God, it's killing me. But anyway, you plug it in like that. You turn on the thing slab. It blinks when it turns on. And then, now I can hear it. I'm gonna go ahead and, you know what? The, the whistling is too much. So this, this is not an option that I like. So, but if you have like inner ear, cause I have the behind ear ones and they just will whistle. I just, I just, my hearing molds aren't that tight. So I wouldn't use this option. I will try it with my other hearing aids, the Phonics Paradise and see if that works. And then, um, but I'll cover that next week. Okay. So that's going to be Bluetooth uh, video. This one is the T coil. All right. So that's one option if you have maybe the inner ear hearing aids and you put it over there, it doesn't feedback. This is an awesome, awesome option because it does have noise canceling here and you can hear really well with headphones. All right, so that's one option. Second option, of course, is the streamer. Now the streamer is, um, I mentioned this in my other video, this is an electromagnetic field with the cord. So when you put it around your neck like this, it, this connects to the T-coil on your hearing aid. But you have to make sure your T-coil is connected or activated by your audiologist. And then um, once it streams through the wire here, it goes to the streamer and this becomes Bluetooth. But I'm not really caring about the Bluetooth today. I am going to find a way to directly connect to the Things Lab. And what I have here and here, so I have a cord this is a 3.5 millimeter audio cord that I 
got, I think I bought it on Amazon. Again, I'll try to find the link and put it on there. I have my streamer and it has the T-coil on it. And then I have the Things Lab stethoscope and I want to do the direct audio. So I'm going to use a 3.5 millimeter male to male audio cord and I'm going to go ahead and connect it to my Things Labs. And then I'm going to take the other side and connect it to my streamer. So basically this is my setup here. And the reason I have this blue thing on here is because this material I wanted something that was a little bit friendly, uh, kid friendly, and it doesn't look like I am all teched out. Teched out. Put that around my neck and this is how I essentially carry it. I do have um, a snap on here that I put this inside and it hides it and that way you won't see all the streamer as well too. And I've used this enough and I pretty much can feel where the buttons are on my streamer and it's really not a problem. So let me snap it in there. That's what it would look like. It's a little weird looking but you know it works for me. That's what I do. So this is a direct audio to the stethoscope to my streamer and then it streams to my hearing aid via T-coil. I use this little rubber band here to keep it in place so it doesn't fall off. I've had this thing fall off and that is not good because this guy is $499 so I don't want to lose that. This works very well for me. This is some um, a very good setup for me. So there you go. That's how I use it. So I turn my streamer on. I turn on my stethoscope scope listen on listen to the hot sound love dub love dub love dub yep all right so the last thing i wanted to show you is taking the same cord i'm gonna get rid of my streamer now taking the streamer off am i hitting my mic all right taking the streamer off so here we go so i just have the cord i'm gonna leave my material on it so i don't have to thread it through again you know i don't want to do all that work again <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put my think flaps back into one end. Um, I'll go ahead and secure it in place as well. There we go. I need a new elastic band. It's going to break very soon. It doesn't last very long, but I should get a box of them. All right, so there we go. So I'm going to put that down. I have a loudspeaker here. I'm going to demonstrate this for you. We're going to go ahead and plug it in. And then I'm going to plug the other side into the mic jack here there we go and i'm gonna go ahead and turn it on there it is it turns on make sure it's under the aux press that button because it has a bluetooth on there too i'm not doing bluetooth in this video that's the next video all right so let's go ahead and turn this thing on all plugged in there there we go i turned it on okay there we go so i turned it on that's wicked loud man talk about loud right Oh my goodness, I made my table <laughs> shake. Holy cow, this is the, uh, that's the sound of it. Whew. Can you hear that? So we can, you can do this for teaching purposes. Hello. Let me turn this up. Oh, it's not liking that. So let's go ahead and try it over here. Let me see if I can get the mic off. So I'm gonna take my mic off. I'm gonna try to take my mic off so you can hear it. I don't know if that looks good, but anyway, that is awesome. I love that. I love that. I love that. So I would use that in the clinic if I wanted to talk to my coworkers about, hmm, I hear my mama. I want to check it out. Or if I had a student, that'd be really cool. First option, you can use earbuds. Things Lab has pretty cool ones. Or you can go ahead and use headphones with noise canceling. You can also use a streamer as well. And this is the Compilot 2 that I use because it's made by Phonax and I have Phonax hearing aids. But if you have a streamer, you can go ahead and connect right to a 3.5 millimeter cord, which is in, hidden in here, but it's male to male and you connect it right to the Things Labs stethoscope. Alrighty, so those are the things that I wanted to cover in this video, and that is if you don't have Bluetooth in your hearing aid.
All right, so next week we'll go ahead and cover using Bluetooth with the ThinkLab stethoscope and how we can hear in different ways with hearing aids that have Bluetooth. Oh boy, lots of information. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like this content, go ahead and hit the like button wherever it is and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification so that you will know about next video that's coming up. It's going to be great. All right, take care. Bye.